from Devon coastal hideaways and Sussex barns to Manchester semis and South London terraces. He's determined to convince the nation we don't have to live within four walls. You end up with a room that starts at the back of the back garden and goes all the way through, right through here to the front, which is huge. Along with engineer Monty Ravenscroft. If this doesn't fit, then it's going to be embarrassing for me. And plantswoman Rosie Bynes. Totally transform the garden by just opening up the space. They have taken on 12 extraordinary builds. But being a pioneer is problematic. Mum doesn't really like the architect, and the architect doesn't really like Mum. Zach drew us a house that we massively can't afford. So can Zach hold them to his vision as he radically redesigns their homes? We all live in the same kind of house. Outdated, ordinary, and by and large boring. But what if you could change that? What if you could make each of them something special? That's what I want to do. We are in the flux of a design revolution as the boundaries blur between outside and in. These are these people who we say are chosen to explain what God sees because they get a glimpse of it. And in fact, I think there's a word in Arabic which describes people like Hussein. It's, the word is wali. But wali literally means a friend or an intimate, the friends of God. Christians remember the sacrifice of Christ once a week in Holy Communion. For the Shia, their remembrance of the death of Hussein climaxes once a year on Ashura. Their emotional mourning and physical suffering is an echo of what he experienced for them some 1,500 years ago. He is their chosen one, the one who stood up for their beliefs, no matter what the cost. Remembering Hussein and sharing his suffering is how they stay true to his vision of Islam. This is the story of three kings, three battles, and three invasions of 12 months that transformed Britain. What it essentially says is that William sent in a dedicated death squad. To reveal a bitter tale of family betrayals. My brother is a lying dog. And tragic twists of fate. Soon we will be filling England's graveyards. Which would change the shape of Britain. March to battle. And Europe forever. Shall we do battle? Yeah! This is the real story of 1066. On the frozen weekend of the 5th of December 1936, a nerve-shredded King Edward VIII made a secret telephone call from his office in Buckingham Palace. In a private conversation with his brother, he confided that he could no longer be king if it meant abandoning the woman he loved. But recently declassified documents have revealed that his every word was being scrutinized. The idea of tapping the royal family is so sensitive and so inherently controversial. This is dangerous territory. This could be explosive. Andy and Anna return. I feel actually fairly outraged. It's a disgrace. To put Britain's biggest brands under the spotlight. Exactly the same ingredients, mm -hmm. but there's a £3 price difference. Yep. And show how you can save a small fortune. That cost me £12.99. I have to pay £16.99 for this. Brand new super shoppers. Interestingly, this wasn't our first youth quake. If you look back to the Oxford English Dictionary, you will find that that first happened in the 1960s. Youth quake disappeared under the radar for quite a while, but it certainly came back into prominence this year. And that brings us to the moment of truth. <laughs> We've looked at almost 40 different words that have caught the public imagination in 2017. What would you say your word of the year is? Antifa. Definitely from its mansplaining. I'm going to go for woke. White privilege. As it's been so helpful in naming something that has been, been invisible. 
fear gun. We should be focusing our lives around that. Absolutely. It's so beautiful. Others we might think best forgotten. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> but only one can win word of the year. Hello everyone, and welcome to Joffy's Journal. In these series of episodes, I'm taking a look at how investor behaviour has changed over the last 20 years, and how asset managers are responding. Influenced by a number of factors, such as the global financial crisis, technology, regulation. But in this episode, I'm going to take a look at demographics. Why is this so important? Let's find out. If you look at the distribution of wealth in Great Britain, you can see that 50% of the investable wealth is owned by those aged between 55 and 74. This is the so-called baby boomer generation that was born between 1946 and 1964. If I include the older age brackets, you'll see that number goes to over 60%, but you mustn't forget those aged between 45 and 54 who are now starting to think about and save in earnest for retirement. This is a generation of savers who spent the last 20 or 30 years accumulating wealth for the retirement, investing in growth strategies, the accumulation phase, who are now thinking about the decumulation phase, the drawdown phase, or taking income from retirement. Green shoes. He was like a robot that could feed you. Feed me. Cook, cook stuff. And um, I'm you. not finished. <laughs> Whoa. A clock. Chocolate. A baby set. A baby set? set? It's like a little puddle in pool. I don't know. Like a foot spa or something. I have no idea. Plants. <laughs> I'll just fight the floor. Try and find one. Sulk. <laughs> <laughs> Sulk for a little bit and then come on. just forget about it. Yeah. Let's try that. <laughs> Mad about golfing. Slippers. I think my granddad would like this. <sighs> I think I'll give this to my cousins, oh. my big brother. Bears, Play Doh, purse. Hats. I think Kyra would like this. Thank you. This is for my dad. <laughs> um, because um, he's quite tall. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> you can be fitting. <laughs> <laughs> 